Yes, sir. I have a, currently have a three-bedroom property and the council have decided that I'm under-occupied, which means I have been forced to downsize and I've lost my tenancy. I now have what they call the usage and occupy and I have to go to a one-bedroom property before I can even dis just get a new tenancy or ex decide to exchange myself. Um, I find this absolutely appalling and I'm being registered disabled, I find it very difficult to find a property adapted to my needs. I've worked for 10 to 12 years in a galvanising, galvanising industry. Um, I got ill. I had to make excuses, otherwise I'd lose my job through what I've got, the condition I'll get. Uh, I ended up losing my job, but <laughs> there's no point in me losing my job anyway because half the people down there lost their jobs through basic cuts and that to, that to save money down there, so there's two shifts instead of four shifts now. Um, because of my illness, we have, we lost our mobility, no, my, my, mobility car. Um, the mobility car was a lifeline, a big lifeline, and I went 14 months without that, and I had to go to a tribunal, and the tribunal actually turned around, I think it took about 20 minutes, and they told me that it was disgusting, and it shouldn't have happened. Uh, I'm due back in court in two weeks' time, and I've got to go for my ESA. Um, hopefully I'll win it. If I don't, I don't know what to do. Um, and the doctors at this this place where, where you go to see people are just ridiculous. You have 15 minutes and they decide your future. Uh, I've got four children and a wife. Uh, we're £120 a week worse off. And we've got absolutely nothing. We have to borrow money from loan people to get by day by day. It's disgusting, absolutely disgusting. Um, I don't know what else to say on the matter. It's just, it's just heartbreaking. And this, this ain't a plea to no one. This is just use your brains. Please use your brains. The cuts are hurting the people at the bottom. I was given a ward of disability living allowance for life, but with the changes to replace it with personal independence payments, 20 years of case history has been eradicated. I have to start again from scratch and go through the humiliation of applying for um, support that I need. And the support isn't enough anyway, because the money that I get, even though it's the maximum I can get, it wouldn't cover cooking meals for myself, or for a meals for me, it wouldn't cover someone who in the house for me. It doesn't cover, um, well, cleaning me. It doesn't cover taxes to get out of the house to where I want to go. And with these benefit cuts, I would be on even less. So how am I supposed to live? I mean, I already have to live with my mum because I can't live independently. Well, supposedly a personal independence payment would take away my independence even more. assessment and um, she wasn't listening to what he was saying basically and then when the report came back I read it and I passed the comment to my husband well was I in the room with you when she assessed you and he said 
Well, yes, why? I said, well, you read this report. I said, and I'm sure she's talking about somebody else. And certainly not you. So we put in appeal against it, and um, which we had to wait quite some weeks for. Um, so therefore, our income had suddenly dropped again because they take me money away from him. And then when we went into the appeal court, um, before we'd even sat down, we thought, well, yes, we've won this because we're talk looking at a judge, a doctor, and they realise that they're being sent people that have been blatantly assessed incorrectly. And so from that we came out, we'd won the appeal, and he got his uh, disability allowance back again. But we are now waiting for him to be assessed yet again under these new rules and regulations that are going on. And um, keeping our fingers crossed that we don't have to go through the same traumatic experience yet once again. Uh, because now he's obviously worse than he was when he went for his first uh, assessment. But uh, they don't look at you like that. You're not human beings. You're just a number that they want to, uh, to get rid of if they possibly can. Okay, so I've been missing Drake for about two years now because obviously it's a hobby, it's something to do while I'm looking for work because the work industry at the moment is really hard, it's really demotivational with so many people fighting for jobs and stuff. So this is what I've been doing this for just two years now. I've had a few offers to play out places, but for now I'm not physically ready to do that. But as you can see here now, I'm doing a live mix for everybody and I hope everyone enjoys it. My experience as a businessman in Dudley, it is very hard really, economic wise. Financially, people are struggling and people are very depressed and seem to last really in this um, Dudley. The, 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 in Dudley at the moment, the, the town need revamp, is in a bad state. And loads of potholes everywhere. Um, business at the moment is on a, on a dung, really. Um, one of the things that I'm really angry about, and the way the austerity is affecting me and my community, is um, uh, the threat to closure of our local district hospital. Um, I live in Bronxrove, just a few miles from Dudley, and our hospital is the Alexandra Hospital in Redditch. And uh, because the NHS has overspent massively on a private financial initiative deal that means that the Worcester Royal Hospital has ended up costing £750 million. Because there's uh, this big gap in the finances of uh, Worcestershire Hospital's NHS Trust, they are now saying they have to close at the Alexandra Hospital. Um, this means that um, the A&E services and maternity services uh, are threatened to be moved over 20 miles away and uh, it means that it means this service is not accessible to the poorest and most vulnerable people in our community. And people are just not listening to us. We had over 60,000 people sign a petition uh, calling for a rethink on, on the closure of uh, the Alex. And uh, basically, the views of ordinary people are not being listened to. By stealth, through things like PFI and through new financial arrangements in the NHS, the National Health Service is being destroyed. Uh, bring back EMI, uh, travel costs uh, and equipment. Obviously, I'm studying plastering at college. I need money for my tools for college. Uh, and obviously, it's just another thing for my parents. My parents have been funding for me for 16 years of my life. And obviously, I think it's time that I start to do things on my own back. And obviously, I'm trying to go to college to get an education and get myself a career, but I can't do it because I've got no income. There's not enough jobs out there for 16, 17 year olds. Most of the jobs you have to be 18. And there's, there's just not enough jobs out there for 17 year old people. And if you do get a job at 17, you're on national minimum wage and it's just not enough.